Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to take a look at how to set up the motors on a Core XY printer or Core XC printer. So one of the things you guys might remember is I built the Tron XC a while ago, and I never really got into talking about uh, Core XY technology, which is really different than Cartesian printers. And I, I, thinking about it, I probably will do an episode because I really think that the, the Core XY printer is probably the superior 3D printing technology, although it's a little bit more complex. And that's what I want to talk about in this video, because I got myself into a little bit of trouble. So I had a motor go bad over here on the Tron XE, so I decided to replace the motor. And when I decided to do that, I decided to replace the cables too, to some, for some longer cables that uh, better fit the printer. And, and plus, I wanted to do some other things. And when I did that, I got myself into a world of hurt, basically, because this printer just went wacky. And then I got sitting down thinking, I, you know, before I did that, th this is a Core XY printer. It doesn't work like a Cartesian printer. There is not an X and a Y uh, motor like that. These two motors actually work together in tandem to move the carriage around the top, i.e. the hot end. So, kind of long story short, I had to go through a pretty detailed uh, process to figure this out. And if you're, you know, a Core XE user or, you know, a long time, you, you know, uh, you, you know what I'm talking about. And thankfully, up in the corner, I'll put it, uh, you know, can from down under. It really helped me out just by um, corresponding with me and, and kind of helping me think through some of these uh, situations. So big thanks to Can and helping me out with this. So I, that's why one of the reasons I decided to make this video, because I really didn't see anything else um, that consolidated on, on the interweb that showed how to really configure these motors um, in, into a workable state without pulling your hair out. And I like to keep my hair at my age. So what I did is I put this together. So before we get into this, what I'm going to do is I want to jump over the bench. I want to share with you a little bit about stepper motors, the wiring and the cables and the motors themselves, which is really critical to this process. And then what we'll do is we'll come back to this printer and I'll show you how I kind of figured things out. So let's head over to the bench. Okay, welcome to the bench. So what we're going to start with is a little bit of a primer on stepper motor. So what we have here is a unipolar stepper motor. And what I have over here is a schematic of the stepper motor. So if we put the schematic over here, what we see is we have two coils which control the stepper motor. So a pulse gets fired to one coil and a pulse gets fired to another coil. And this is what does the stepping action. Uh, in simplistic terms. So the reason we need to know that is we need to identify the two coils and the wire pairing for the two coils. Now before we go there, what I want to share with you is a little bit of what kind of got me into this trouble to do this video. So one of the things, I had a motor fail on the Tron X. I had this motor fail and with the failure of this motor I said, well, okay, I'm going to do some changes. I got it apart. So I ordered some new cables and I got some new cables and I really wasn't paying close attention uh, to the cable and so I wired it all up and it didn't work. Now, we're going to play a little bit of Let's Find Waldo here. So if I don't drop the cables, I'm going to show you these two cables. Now let's zoom in on these two cables. Let me move them over here. So I'll zoom in so it's against the white so you can see the colors and everything a little bit better. Now, what do you notice about this? These two cables are different. And so the idea is with the cables, are the center conductors are typically your grounds or your return lines, where the ends are typically your signal lines. Now, I say typically, again, there are all kinds of steps motors out there. There are six wire stepper motors, four wire. As you can see, this is a six, uh, six pin stepper motor and it terminates in a four pin to the board. And you notice the um, uh, wiring configuration or the coloring configuration here. So this is important because one of the next things we need to do is we need to determine the pairing of these coils so we get them right in our order. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a stepper motor and we're going to plug this in and I'm going to get this plugged in and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a diode just basically any diode will work and it really doesn't matter anode or cathode and so what you're going to do is you're going to plug this in into the board side into just two holes and you're going to spin your motor now you see if I don't shake the table too much the LED flash because a stepper motor is both a generator and a motor so what I know is that a red and blue are a pair. So I make a complete circuit in the coil. Now I'm going to do this over here and again I can see that black and green create a coil or complete a circuit for a coil. 
Now for grins and giggles, if I put it in the middle, basically I get nothing. And then if I put it in the ends, I get nothing. Because again, different as we see here, uh, different cables can be wired differently. Now, what I did is I actually popped these pins out and rewired this to this configuration because it was far easier to understand and manage because I now know that these two segments are individual coils. And so long as you treat them as individual coils, you'll be able to figure this out. So now that we figured out our pairs, what we need to do is organize these pairs into some logical sequences. So what I've done here, now pardon my poor handwriting, uh, I, I created this in a way uh, so you can kind of track it here, and I'll explain this in a second. Because what we want to do is in, in a core XY configuration, we really don't have an X and a Y. What we have is an alpha and a beta motor because what happens is these two motors work together. Basically a, a Core XY printer is, is a delta printer except in, instead of having one axis that moves the head that other axis moves the bed itself. So these guys have to work together in a continuous push-pull fashion for this to all work. So these guys need to be um, sort of opposing so there isn't an X and a Y axis from a um, from a logical standpoint, there is one physically on the printer, obviously, but logically the way they're treated is not. And so to, to figure out your wiring sequence, which can get rather heady because, again, different boards handle it differently, different cables, different motors. So how do you sort this out? So, again, thanks to CAN's help, what I did is I sorted this into groups. So I sorted one set of alpha and beta with the different coil configurations. So I treated, uh, you know, the first coil is L1, the second coil is L2. Now the important thing is it doesn't matter which one's L1 and L2 so long as you treat them uniformly as L1 and L2. So left to right, right to left, doesn't matter so long as you just you do that, um, you know, in a repeated fashion. So now what I have here is I have red, black, red, black, and then I end up with black, red, black, red, just the total inverse across both motors. And then I flip as I go through here. So basically, per single combination of alpha, beta, you'll have four iterations of this. Now, you'll have a second four iterations down here where we flip alpha and beta. So you have eight potential combinations. Now, you may be saying, Joe, but how do I flip uh, alpha and beta, you, you flip them on the board itself as you flip the connectors between the two. Now, more than likely, your board is going to be labeled X and Y. And maybe if you built like the Tron Axi from a kit, it's going to be labeled as XY. But in reality, it, it is an alpha primary and secondary motor because the two motors work together. So what you need to do is go through each one of these perturbations until the axes move as expected in home correctly. Now, I'll give you a little hint. Um, since the motors work opposing, the more than likely the situation is going to be 180 degrees of each other. So, in other words, I, I doubt and basically it's almost an impossibility for you to have, for example, scenario one to be true. So you could technically cross that off the list for probably 90% of the known universe unless you have some rather strange motor cable combination because that's the other thing. It all depends on your motor cable combination. So this is one of the reasons I pointed out going to this fashion, which makes it very clear the cable pairs, how to order it, made it a lot easier to find this than it is when you have cable scenarios like this sort of jockeyed around. So again, what you're going to want to do is go through this list, and, and the easiest piece, if you're have, having a hard time getting your mind around all this, because it can be a little bit, is just go through each perturbation. Don't worry about ruling out ones up front. And then just go through. I mean, because a lot of times, if you get close, say, for example, you're moving the correct axes. So in other words, if you go to the Marlin control panel or uh, Repetier control panel or whatever control panel you're using of the firmware, and you say move X gantry or X axis, and it moves, but it moves in the wrong direction, and the, the Y also moves, uh, but maybe in the correct direction or wrong, more than likely at that point in time, what you may need to do is flip the alpha and beta 
or probably this way is a better way to put it, flip the alpha and beta. And that will probably put you in a correct orientation because for the most part, most uh, Core XY printers need to be at 180 degree um, inverted phase of, of one another. And again, this is kind of like the norm, not the absolute. So, And so if you do the 180 and then you do the flip, you'll get there a lot closer because again, I, I kept struggling with the, the, the flip of the alpha and beta because uh, I work mainly with Cartesian printers and you know, the Cartesian printer, you have a clear X and a Y. And, and actually it wasn't until I read it, uh, this blog post that really said you don't have an X and a Y. And, and it kind of like dawned on me. It's something I knew but really didn't sink in. And one of the reasons I'm making this video, because I spent a lot of man hours sorting through this. And again, thanks to Ken kind of getting my head straight around this because he sent me some stuff and he's built several of these and it's been very helpful kind of communicating back and forth just to get the creative juices flowing to kind of sort this out. So again, that's why I wanted to share it with you guys. So tell you what, so I've shared this piece. Let's go back to the printer and take a look at the cable harness, which I rigged up to actually uh, figure out these combinations. So I'm going to head over to the printer now. Okay, welcome back. So you saw at the bench what we did is we looked at the cables and we uh, talked about the stepper motors. We came up with the bundled pairs and all that. Now the piece is, one of the things I forgot to mention at the bench is all those cables are keyed. In other words, they only go in one way. So it's very difficult, you know, to flip them upside down because a lot of the forms said, hey, you know, just label the connector. So if I take this connector out, here, just label one side A, one side B, and just flip it over. Well, the thing is, you can't do that on these motors because the top of it's keyed. So that was a bit problematic, as well as the, the you can't flip the other end on the control board over there because it's also keyed. Now, I can go back and forth. I can do the alpha beta swap, but I can't do the flip. So what I decided to do to, get, to help with my sanity, and I got tired of taking the X-Acto knife and popping these pins out, is what I did is I made up a set of cables where I just have an extension uh, cable here basically of make sure I get it in the frame uh, of the from the control board so I bring my four wires up from the control board into just a four pin connector and you see I I have it here heat, uh, with heat shrink tape now I'm going to have secondary purposes for this you'll see in an upcoming video but for this it worked well and then what I did is I used these uh, uh, jumper pins that you, you would use in a breadboard to connect these and what I simply did is is had them you know, grouped together. So what I would do is I would pull two out, push two in, and be able to flip these as I went through. And I did the same thing over here until I got the correct combination. And within, you know, going through and doing this, it took me a while to solder this up. Uh, mainly these these connectors here because I just did the short pass through cable. Within minutes, I had it all sorted. And instead of trying to figure out, oh, did I do this cable this way and all that kind of stuff, because I even tried laying out four cables, doing them in, um, you know, setting the cables up, you know, popping the pins, moving the pins. But one of the things that I found, it was really hard to keep track of them that way, uh, and I made mistakes. And then so I kept running into dead ends because I would make mistakes in the cable and I'd have to go sort it all back out. So this really helped me sort this out. And, and again, I'm going to keep these cables for if I have to do this again. It makes it very quick. So again, if you're into, um, you know, Core XY printers, I don't know, do they call them Core X's can? I, I, I don't know. I've never heard anybody really refer to them in, in voice, just in writing Core XY. So maybe you leave a comment below if it's okay to call them Core X's because this is a Tron XE, I guess. Anyways, um, I would keep a set of these cables around just to, you know, the, make up a set of these cables just for this purpose. Because like I say, in minutes I had this sorted, working again, and I was a happy camper where I had spent literally probably uh, six or seven man hours flipping cables, popping the cables out of here with an X-Acto knife and working them around. And so anyways, that's why I wanted to share. I wanted to be able to document this. So if you're having this problem in the future and you run into this, you have a way to solve it. Now, I have had uh, actually one viewer write me with this very similar problem, and I really didn't know how to answer them except, you know, make sure your cables are set up correctly. So that was another reason I, I made this. So even if it only helps one person, well, that's one person that will have not spent the time I did trying to sort all this out. 
So hopefully you found it interesting. You gained a little bit of an education on core XY printers. Uh, like I say, I, I just it, it, it dawned on me with this problem. I really haven't talked about core XY printers, and I will in a future episode because these are more complex than a Cartesian printer, but the quality is far better. These are like a Delta printer, except uh, instead of having a third axis move the head up, uh, the third axis moves the bed down, but these two work together like a Delta printer. And this is one of the things, you're going to see me make some mods to this, and that's where I kind of started with in the very near future as to, um, you know, very similar to what you see in a Delta printer. So anyways, I'm going to save that for the future episode. I'm going to call this one a close. Don't forget the swag shop up there. Again, big thanks to Can for helping me out. I owe you for that. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel.